The food supply in the United States is considered to be one of the safest in the world. Yet according to the Centers for Disease Control, millions of Americans still come down with foodborne illnesses every year. Businesses that market, prepare, or serve foods to the consumer are required to ensure that their food is safe to eat. And the employees who perform food handling duties play a vital role in preventing contamination and the spread of foodborne illnesses. In this program, we'll discuss the contamination hazards that are associated with food handling and the materials, equipment, and safe work practices you should use to ensure that the foods you prepare won't make someone else sick. More than 250 different foodborne diseases have been found in food that has been contaminated by microscopic organisms such as bacteria, viruses, and parasites. These organisms are called pathogens, and most of them are too small to see without a microscope. But they can cause big health problems. People with weak immune systems, such as children and the elderly, are especially vulnerable to foodborne illnesses. Symptoms typically include nausea, vomiting, stomach cramps, and diarrhea. But in some cases, these pathogens can cause more serious long-term problems and even be fatal. So federal, state, and local regulations require companies and their employees to follow safe work practices in bringing food through the supply chain from producer to consumer. But in spite of these laws, outbreaks of foodborne illness still occur. So you may have heard the names of some of the pathogens that were involved in the news. They include hazardous bacteria, such as E. coli, which can contaminate water supplies, ground meats, salad greens, and raw vegetables. Salmonella, which has been found in meats, eggs, peanut butter, cucumbers, and romaine lettuce. And listeria, which can infect seafood, deli meats, bean sprouts, even cantaloupes. Foodborne viruses include hepatitis A and norovirus, which can contaminate shellfish, salad greens, and fruits. Parasites that can cause foodborne illnesses include Trichinella spiralis, a roundworm found in uncooked meats which can invade the intestines and cause abdominal pain, vomiting, and diarrhea. And Cryptosporidium, which can also affect the intestines with similar unpleasant results. Small amounts of pathogens exist naturally in many types of food, and our immune systems can usually handle them safely. But given enough time and the right conditions, microorganisms can multiply very quickly and cause serious health problems. Pathogens generally thrive at temperatures between 41 degrees and 135 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is the danger zone where they can grow and reproduce best. To prevent foodborne illness, you need to keep food out of this temperature range. Chilling food can slow and almost stop the activity of most pathogens. Raising its temperature out of the danger zone by cooking it can kill them. However, the illnesses caused by some pathogens result from toxins that they produce when they're living in the food. So even if you kill the bacteria, the toxin can still be hazardous to any person who ingests it which makes these types of pathogens even more dangerous. About one in four outbreaks of foodborne illnesses can be traced back to the personal hygiene of the employees who prepare the food. So as a food handler, you need to make good personal hygiene a priority and not just during working hours. Your lifestyle needs to include regular bathing, washing your hair, and keeping your clothes clean. You should trim your fingernails short so they're easy to keep clean as well. When preparing for work, remember that rings, bracelets, and wristwatches can give germs a great place to hide, and earrings can fall into food without you even being aware of it. If you need to wear a medical alert bracelet, you should put it around your ankle rather than on your wrist. 
When you arrive at work, you should put a clean apron or chef's coat on over your street clothes or uniform if you wear one. Your hair can contaminate food directly by falling into it or indirectly if you touch it with your hands. So pull your hair back and put it inside a hat or hairnet. Cover any facial hair with a beard restraint as well. Before you enter the food preparation area, wash your hands. Always use hot water and soap. Lather and scrub for at least 20 seconds. Then rinse and dry thoroughly. To avoid recontaminating your hands, you should turn off the faucet with a towel. If you have a cut, wound, or open sore on your hands, cover it with a tight-fitting waterproof bandage and put a glove on over that. If you are required to wear disposable gloves on the job, wash your hands before putting them on and throw them away when you're done. Never reuse them. When you're performing your food handling tasks, avoid touching your nose, mouth, hair, or skin. Do not cough or sneeze into your hands or onto food or equipment. If a tissue isn't available, try to sneeze into your bent elbow. Smoking, eating, drinking, or chewing gum or tobacco is usually prohibited in a food prep area. Regulations may allow you to drink beverages through a straw from a covered container, but check with your supervisor about this first. If you're feeling sick, you should never perform food handling tasks. There's just too much risk of spreading germs. If it's just a minor head cold, you can ask your supervisor if there's work that you could do outside of the food prep area. But if your symptoms include sore throat, fever, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or jaundice, you should stay home. And if you are ever diagnosed with a salmonella, hepatitis, or shigella infection, you should notify your employer immediately. Washing our hands is something all of us have done all of our lives. But for food handlers, thorough hand washing is more than a good habit. It's a professional and sanitary requirement. To prevent the spread of foodborne illnesses, you need to know how to wash your hands and when. Let's start with the how. First, you should roll up your sleeves and remove any wristwatches, bracelets, or rings that you're wearing. Anything that you have on your hands or wrists prevents effective cleaning by giving microorganisms a place to hide. To ensure a thorough cleaning, you should scrub for at least 20 seconds. A convenient way to time yourself is to sing the happy birthday song twice in your head while you're doing it. Turn on warm water and wet your hands all over. Then add liquid soap. This combination does a good job of dissolving natural skin oils and lifting dirt. Lather and rub your hands together, first palm to palm. Then using the palm of each hand to scrub the back of the other one, including the fingers. Interlace your fingers to scrub between them. Clean each thumb by gripping it with the other hand and rotating. Do the same for each fingertip, scrubbing thoroughly around your fingernails. Lather and scrub your wrists and lower forearms as well. Then rinse off under the running water, keeping your fingers pointed down. This helps suds and soils to drain off completely. Wet hands can carry up to a thousand times more germs than dry ones, so dry yours thoroughly with a single-use paper towel or a hot air blower. You should also use a towel to turn off the faucet. That way you don't recontaminate your clean hands. A food handler not only needs to wash their hands thoroughly, they also need to wash them often. You should wash yours before entering a food preparation area, putting on gloves, or handling anything that has been cleaned and sanitized. Between each of the food prep tasks that you perform that involves different types of food, after you clean equipment or scrub the floor, take out the trash or handle dirty dishes, linens, or clothing. After you take a break for a snack, a phone call, or a smoke. And after you cough or sneeze, touch your hair or your face, use a tissue or handkerchief, or visit the restroom.
To prevent the spread of foodborne diseases, a food preparation area and all of the equipment and utensils that are used in it need to be both clean and sanitary. Because clean and sanitary are two different things. As a food handler, you need to understand how they are different and how you should use them to prevent food contamination in your workplace. The cleaning process removes dirt, grease, food particles, and other substances from food prep surfaces where they have collected. It uses soap or detergent mixed with warm water to loosen and dissolve these materials, as well as some physical force, like scrubbing to strip them from the surface. For example, when cleaning prep tables and equipment, containers or shelving in the walk-in, you should use a bucket or spray bottle full of warm soapy water with a clean towel for scrubbing. After cleaning, you should rinse the surface with warm fresh water and wipe clean with a towel. Eventually, you may notice food particles in your bucket of soapy water. That's when it's time to replace it. Get a clean cloth, sponge, or scrubbing pad to use with every fresh batch. Sanitizing does something else. It kills microscopic organisms that may exist on the surfaces that could come into contact with food. And it requires time for the disinfectants to work, because pathogens aren't always easy to kill. Once a surface has been cleaned, it's ready to be sanitized. Your employer will have their own preferred disinfectants as well as standard procedures for mixing them into a sanitizing solution. Check with your supervisor if you have any questions about the materials or practices you should use. Don't mix any cleaning materials with your sanitizers. At best, adding soap and water to a sanitizer will only make it less effective. But sometimes mixing these types of substances can produce gases that are dangerous to breathe. Using a bucket and clean cloth or a spray bottle, apply the sanitizer to a surface and then wait. Give the disinfectant time to work. How long you should wait and whether you need to rinse the surface afterward depends on the type of sanitizer that you're using. Ask your supervisor about proper procedures before you begin, because improper sanitizing won't kill germs. Remember, cleaning removes substances that you can see, while sanitizing kills germs that you can't. It's a two-step process, and both steps are necessary to prevent foodborne diseases. While some machines, such as dishwashers, can combine the cleaning and sanitizing steps in a single cycle, as a food handler, you will usually perform them separately by hand. Outbreaks of foodborne illness occur when people eat foods that have been contaminated by bacteria, viruses, or parasites. Fortunately, most contamination can be prevented by following safe food handling practices. But one type of food contamination in particular, cross-contamination, requires special attention. In cross-contamination, active pathogens move from one type of food to another type of food where they are not usually found. For example, if raw meat, poultry, seafood, and eggs are not kept separate from each other, from fresh fruits and vegetables, or from foods that have already been cooked, the consequences can be serious. Unfortunately, cross-contamination can happen all too easily during food prep and storage. For example, frozen hamburger patties that are left to thaw on a middle shelf of a refrigerator can drip liquid that contains active pathogens onto vegetables that have been stored on a lower shelf. When the patties are cooked, the high temperature will kill any bacteria in the meat. But on the ready-to-eat vegetables, the pathogens are passed directly to the consumer without further treatment. So the salmonella bacteria from raw meat in the kitchen could cross-contaminate a self-serve buffet. To prevent this, raw foods should always be stored as close to the floor as possible with ready-to-eat foods placed above them. The utensils that are used in food prep can cause cross-contamination as well.
For example, after using a cutting board and knife to slice raw fish, you should not use the same board and knife to chop fresh salad greens. The watercress and arugula could be cross-contaminated by an active pathogen that originated in the sea bass, such as listeria. So make sure you use a fresh, clean cutting board and knife for each type of food you prepare. And all serving utensils, as well as storage containers that will come into contact with ready-to-eat foods, should be thoroughly cleaned and sanitized before use. But that's not all. Cross-contamination can occur on a crowded grill or other cooking surface, too. A pork chop that's already done could pick up a live pathogen from an uncooked chicken breast that's put down right next to it. And you should never place cooked food back onto the same plate that held it when it was raw. When you're changing out of a dirty apron, either put it into the laundry or hang it up. Never put it down on a food prep counter. That could cross-contaminate the surface which in turn could cross-contaminate any equipment, utensils, or foods that are placed there. Meat, poultry, fish, dairy products, eggs. These are all foods that will go bad if you leave them out at room temperature. More than half of foodborne illnesses result from people eating perishable foods like these that have been stored, cooked, or held after cooking at the wrong temperatures. So one of the things that safe food handling depends on is temperature control. It has a direct effect on any microorganisms that are living on or in the food. Food pathogens tend to live and reproduce best at temperatures between 41 and 135 degrees Fahrenheit. But you can slow and even stop their activity by forcing them out of their comfort zone. For example, cooking food can raise its temperature enough to kill any pathogens it may contain. Raw meat and poultry must be cooked to a minimum internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit for this to occur. You shouldn't rely on the outside color of the meat to tell you when it's hot enough. The temperature that matters is on the inside. So use a clean food thermometer to get an accurate reading. And remember to place the probe in the thickest part of the food. While cooking food to proper temperatures can certainly help to keep it safe, it's important to understand that if food has been mishandled before cooking, even high temperatures might not help. Some pathogens, such as the botulinus bacterium, release toxins into the food they live in. So even if you kill the bacteria later by cooking, these toxins can still make people sick. And immediately cooking foods is not always desirable or convenient in a busy kitchen. In that case, you can reduce the activity of any pathogens in foods by cooling them below 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Foods at this temperature can be stored safely for some time. Foods that are kept frozen below 32 degrees Fahrenheit can be stored almost indefinitely. Remember, each refrigerator or walk-in should be equipped with a thermometer so everyone can make sure the temperature inside is staying at the desired setting. While chilling pathogens or putting them on ice can help deactivate them, it doesn't kill them. As soon as the food warms up, the germs wake up and become active again. So you should never leave frozen foods to defrost at room temperature. If there's time, defrost them gradually on the bottom shelf of a refrigerator. If you're in a hurry, you can thaw frozen foods in a microwave, but be sure to cook them immediately afterward. Cooked and ready-to-eat foods that are being held or served in salad bars, buffets, or cafeterias should be kept out of the temperature danger zone as well. As a rule of thumb, that means keeping hot foods hot above 135 degrees Fahrenheit and cold foods cold below 41 degrees. As we've seen, there are many ways that food can be contaminated by pathogens which can make people sick. But when food handlers use the right equipment and follow safe work practices, 
Foodborne illnesses can be prevented. Let's review. Outbreaks of foodborne illness occur when people eat foods that have been contaminated by pathogens such as bacteria, viruses, and parasites. As a food handler, you need to maintain good personal hygiene habits, including thorough hand washing, both at home and at work. Cleaning and sanitizing is a two-step process. You should know how to accomplish both in a food prep environment. You need to understand how cross-contamination can occur and how to prevent it. And you should understand how controlling the temperature of food can reduce or even eliminate the pathogens in it. Now that you know how pathogens can cause foodborne illnesses and what you can do to fight them, you can help ensure that the food you prepare is safe for everyone who eats it.